Hi everybody, this is Erin Lincoln and this is my second Stamp Affair video for 2015. This one shows you how to use the petal stitch dies included in your Stamp Affair kit to add stitching and beading details to your existing flower dies. All right, we already made our uh, necklace base and what I recommend here is to plan out how you, you want your necklace to look. Use your dies, use paper cutouts, um, stack things for size on your necklace base, and this will give you an idea and a plan for when you're cutting out your felt. So that's basically what I'm doing here. Now in the supply list, we ask that you uh, go get yourself some blingy buttons, and I did specify shankless, but they're a little tough to find, so if you did get shanked buttons, which means they have that loop on the back, they're pretty easy to deal with. I just take my little pair of jewelry making pliers that I use to snip my dies apart when they're wired together. And it makes really quick work of the back of these buttons with the shanks. Just a snip snip. These are really made out of plastic. They only look like they're made with metal. So it's piece of cake. And so I'm doing that here because the buttons as well as the felt and the dies are part of my design. So I really want a good idea of what my necklace is going to look like. So play around with the flower dies that you have. I even have some leaf dies here. They're from Friendly Flowers. And I found uh, freshly fallen snowflake dies were perfect. So on this necklace that I'm making today, we are using some leaf dies, some snowflake dies, and I believe those are beautiful blooms to the medium size. I have everything cut out of felt. And once again, I lay it down on my necklace base with the buttons so I have a very good idea when I take it over to my die cut machine how this is going to look. All right, so we're going to take it on over to the die cut machine. You see it's right down there. I have a visual and now I'm going to be using these flower stitch dies. They come all wired together but of course you're going to have to snip them apart and this is how they work to add stitching to all your existing flower dies. You take a piece of washi tape and you get the tape maybe like a quarter of an inch above the holes on your die and you're going to tape it down to the platform of your die cutting machine and you're going to slip a flower cut whatever flower cut doesn't matter right underneath and you butt the edge of the flower cut right up to the tape and that kind of gives you a marker it gives you a stopping point a placement point See, I'm butting the felt right up to where that tape is. No further, no less. Taping it down, rolling it through. And you have to do this for every petal. Sounds like it takes a long time, but it doesn't. I would just maybe recommend staying away from daisies with like 20 different petals because that would take some time. Okay, as you can see here, the middle of this flower is all messy because we repeatedly cut a hole in the same area because we rotated it around. That was the point of the axis. But you know, no big deal because it's getting covered up. Now, I originally designed these petal stitch dies to work just on flowers. But I realized when I was making this necklace, we could add some stitching detail to leaves as well and add another layer of interest to this necklace. So I'm using a different petal stitch die than I used on the flower, but it works the exact same way. You tape it down, you use the tape as a point of reference to where you place your object, your flower, your leaf, and then you run it, run it through and then rotate it per leaf or per petal. Okay, now it's time to get down to business and do some stitching. We're doing the leaves first. I am not doing any beading, so we included beads in your kit. But on these leaves, I'm just doing some simple stitching. And with necklaces, I think, in particular, I like to add as much color as possible. So I am using contrasting thread, nothing that matches up with the felt I'm using. And I am probably going to tie off on the leaves, in particular, each stitch detail on each leaf. So I don't have this long line of floss kind of hopscotching from one to the other that you might see on the necklace, might show. So I am just doing them individually. And so because I have two per leaf and two leaves, 
I'm going to do off camera all four. And so should you if you choose to do that. Okay, we're moving on to our flowers. Again, look at that really messy middle. No big deal, get covered up. Now you know I like to punch out all my felt plugs from the holes. I just feel like this makes it easier for me to see. It gives a cleaner look. So if you wanna do that, use the back end of your needle and just punch them out. All right, we are actually doing some beading from your kits. We're using the beads. We go up one hole, pick up a bead, go down another. And it adds, especially with these silver beads, a lot of sparkle and bling. And as you can see, I'm not, um, I am kind of hopscotching between each petal. And I, I think with this particular shape, I know my thread is not gonna show, so I have no problem doing this. It's so again, same treatment per every petal. And so you can imagine with all the detail, with all the flower dyes you have in your collection, you have a lot of variation and options with these dyes, these petal stitch dyes included in the kit to add some really great interest to your projects. And, and if you're a big fan of the stitching dyes, this opens up a whole world of possibility. My only recommendation here is you uh, make sure uh, you know what color bead you're using. Otherwise, you're going to have to take one out and redo it. Not that I'm aware of that situation at all. No big deal. Okay, and like I said before, a little earlier on this video, on my blog, where this video is listed on my stamp of air time, I think I'm in the evening sometime, I'm going to have some illustrations on the, all the different ways you can use these petal dies. I can't demonstrate them all in this video, um, but a little visual which you can print out will give you lots of options. So when you're planning out your necklace, you have a plan. You have some ideas. I'm not going to leave you high on dry on that one. This is just a really basic tutorial to show you how they work. Okay, I think I've done all my beading. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you one more flower now that I think about this. I'm just layering things here. I just, especially with the necklaces, I kind of like to remind myself, refresh myself as I go, how things are going to look. Especially when you're using so much color, you have to balance the color out. So we have one side. We approve of that. So I actually did this other flower with a different petal stitch die. And I'm going to show you how I am doing this. Now, instead of going up one hole, grabbing a bead, and then going down another, you can go up one hole, grab a bead, and then go straight back down the hole you came up out of. And that bead is larger than the hole, so now you've stitched a single bead in. And on these petals, on this flower, I am adding three beads in that manner. So all you see are these dots of color, almost like French knots, but with a little more texture. Okay, I'm gonna show, I showed you one petal, just assume you go ahead and do it on all, I think those are six petals on that particular flower. Okay, now that I have everything done, I've layered it so I have a visual of how things go together, and I'm just hot gluing all the bits and pieces to my necklace base. Hot glue with all those strings kind of gets in the way, but once they uh, harden up a little bit, you can pull them away. Now, if here's a tip with hot glue. If for some reason you don't like the placement of something, just wait for things to cool. Or you don't even have to wait for things to cool, but get your heat gun and just hit it with your heat gun and it softens that glue and you can pull it apart and rearrange. Now, if you notice, on all my flowers, I have cut two. So, like, I have two of the autumn rose flowers there on the right. And the reason I've done this is because I layer them. I, you know, I turn the bottom one a little bit, and it helps cover up that necklace base even more. So instead of seeing the necklace base, you just see the same color as the beaded flower. So that's what I recommend. Just gives you a little bit more coverage, and it makes it look fuller and... Uh, just more weighty. All right, I've done the left side. Now, if you notice, I forgot something. I'll realize it later, and it's the blue, the Autumn Tide Bitty Button Stacker flower. 
no big deal. Okay, for this middle flower, put lots and lots and lots of hot glue because that hot glue is gonna raise the level of that middle flower to the same plane as those outer flowers because the felt's really thick. If you stack it, it has some height to it and use the hot glue kind of like a pop dot or a dimensional adhesive to bump up that middle flower to the same plane because on the edges it wants to curl up. We have everything together all ready to wear. Love the freshly fallen dyes on these. Okay, before you go, let me show you another handy tip with the petal stitch dies. I designed these so you could use them far beyond Stamp Affair. You could replenish your bead supply, make lots of necklaces, lots of blingy beaded stitched flowers. So we're gonna take that, uh, that cluster of stitching holes, you have two sizes, the large and the small, and cut that out of whatever flower you're using. And it's designed to look almost like a sunflower middle. Just solid beaded textural middle instead of using a blingy button or a button or another felt cut. And so simply with these, you take your beads, you go up, one stitching hole, grab a bead, go down another. And in this manner, you fill in the whole thing with colors and beads. And it almost, especially if you're using like silver beads or like a crystal bead, it takes the place of a blingy button center. Now, depending on the size of your bead, this might really fill in when you're all done. But if it's too small, this is what you do next. You go up hole A, wherever hole A happens to be, grab a bead and then go down hole B. And you fill in and yes, you're going up and down holes that already have beads, but between your, because now you're going between holes, you have the space to do that. And it fills it in. So if you have beads more on the smaller side, this is how you add a lot more, uh, you fill it in. All right, so go forth and have fun with your petal stitch dies far beyond Stamp Affair and all the fun you can have with those. And thanks for joining me. I am so looking forward to your necklaces. They're gonna be gorgeous. It really came together well. And here's mine and I can't wait to wear mine. Okay, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed these stitching dies today and love what you made. Bye-bye.